Hello. 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 We're live. Everybody live. Yeah, we are live now. Welcome to We Working Women live stream. My name is Sherry, and, and I'm the CEO and the co founder of We Working Women, North, Ameri uh, North America's largest platform for Chinese women's personal and professional development. Every month, we invite uh, guests from different industry to join us and share their experience and uh, wisdom and knowledge with our audience of over 100,000 uh, subscribers. It's an opportunity for the We Working Women community to learn about the uh, personal and the career paths of uh, diverse, from diverse professionals and also a chance for global guests to connect with our dynamic network of Chinese women around the world. So today we are so excited to have Iwan to be our special guest. So uh, be be before Iwan start, so I can uh, start uh, introduce a, a little bit about Iwan. Iwan is an expert in public speaking. He is a professional MC and uh, pre uh, pre uh, presenter and uh, has spoken in front of audience of all sizes. His largest uh, audience was uh, 50,000 people at the FIFA Arab Cup. Yep. Not only <laughs> is he an excellent public speaker, he, uh, he teaches public speaking. He's the top rated uh, public speaking instructor uh, on Coursera and Udemy with over 150,000 students. Not all, so it's online though, don't worry. I, don't, I'm not, I can't talk to 150,000 people, but yeah, there's 150,000 <laughs> people there. <laughs> there, yeah. Ivan is uh, also public, uh, published the author uh, and uh, creator of the hashtag Ending Boring. I'm so interested. We're going to talk about sure. that. Sure, yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's which is everything. also the name of uh, his book. Uh, in my work with we, 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 uh, with we Working Women, I'm always talking uh, to women about uh, personal and professional development. When I ask them, what is the most important skill set that they need to advance their career and uh, business? Uh, basically, everyone says to me, uh, communication skills, presentation skills, and then public speaking. So today, uh, we are so excited to, to have you here. And then uh, you. give us really the, uh, the tips uh, for everybody. So Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here, Sherry. Thank you so much for having me. Listen, I'm going to hijack this for just a second, okay? And I'm going to tell you why, okay, Sherry? Mm, because okay. <laughs> One of the big yeah. things, when every one of us is working online, right? Yeah. And here's something I want to say to everyone. Here, here's the thing. If we were in the real world, Sherry, and if you uh -huh. were talking and I went like this, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it would be so yeah. rude. It would be so yeah. rude, right? Yeah. But online, I could be looking at a million things. I could have my phone against the screen. No one would ever know, right? Yeah, that's so true. One of the big things I want to do today with everyone is uh -huh. I don't want to talk at anyone. I actually want to talk with people because if I if we sit here and we're doing all the talking, how do we know anyone is listening? So right now, everybody in the WeChat, everyone's on WeChat, right? Yes. Okay, right now, everybody in the WeChat, if you are here, if you are listening, I want you to give me a smiley face in the WeChat right now. Sherry, yeah, everybody, let's let's say let's, let's give go. a smiley let's the, face. Uh, if you're here, I want to see a smiley face, okay? Wow, wow, we have so many smiley there, faces. Right now, now, my yeah. friends, here's one of the biggest things I want you to walk away with, okay? The uh -huh. next time you're doing anything online, and I we'll do the Q and A in a minute. I'm sorry, Sherry. Ashley should have warned you. I have, I have many things to say, but here's one thing I want to let everyone know: <laughs> the next time you're doing any online session, okay? Every two, three minutes, do something that makes people check in with you. Ask them a yes or no question. Ask them agree, disagree. The uh -huh. more you can get people interacting in the chat, uh -huh. the more it'll be harder for me to do this. Yeah, that's, that's really important. Yeah, what yeah. I... Uh, so how many, how many smiley faces did we get? 
Huh? I cannot tell. Uh, Thank you to everyone who gave me a smiley face. Yeah, you can see here, here, if you, here. If there's too many you can't count, boom. Yeah. Listen, that's true. and everyone who is listening right now, how many of you did something like this? This is probably happening all over the world right now. If you're on your computer with on WeChat, there are people who are going like this. Oh, I have to do? And I got you. If I you're sitting you. with your phone like this, watching TV, doing the dishes, you're like, oh my God, what? He wants me. Hold on, hold on. And I got you. Yeah. That that's In true. Short, this is the thing. You can watch a YouTube video. Gang, you can watch <laughs> a YouTube video and learn anything you want. Yeah. You come to watch conversations, not to listen, but to learn. I come to interact. Mm -hmm. And if you can make that subtle distinction, everyone right now, the next time you're online, your goal is not to talk to people. Your goal mm -hmm. is not to give them information, sell them on ideas, update them. Teach. No, no. Your goal is to interact. Yeah, to Even grab their else, attention. Afterward. The yeah. same like what you're saying and boring, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Whew, thank you. I you promise I'm not going to interrupt anymore. I'm going to start. Right, yeah, go. I'm going to start. Okay. <laughs> so, Ivan, uh, I look you up on the online and um, you have uh, such an interesting profile, right? And I know you graduate from uh, McGill and... Uh, I think you major as management. So can you tell us how did you get into public speaking as a career? Absolutely. So it's it was a dark and stormy night. I'm just <laughs> so here's here's what story I story start. Happened. The story start. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, before I went to university, I actually worked for a few years and I worked for the attorney general's office and I would travel around the province of British Columbia in Canada and I do interactive workshops. So when the time I went to university, I had this experience speaking in front of people. So I was, you know, usually a little bit more advanced than everyone else in presenting just because I'd done it more, mm -hmm. not because I was naturally good at it because I was not, but because I had more practice. Mm -hmm. Then when I was in university, I got to compete in case competitions and I traveled around the world. Then, mm -hmm. so I had, I worked in finance, in sales for non-for-profit. I worked in mm -hmm. bookkeeping. I worked in human resources. I owned two companies. I worked for non-for-profit and I hated all of it. And I wasn't <laughs> very, I, I'm telling you, I hate Sherry. I hated all of it and I wasn't very good at it. Okay. I burnt out every, I, bar I barely made it a year in any of those jobs. But the one thing that kept happening was Whenever, you know, when you get hired for a new job, they make you do training for like, you know, you go to the office, you meet and you do training. Whenever we had those trainings, people are like, oh, Yvonne, why don't you do the presentation? You're good at that. So after years of struggling through things I didn't enjoy, I thought, well, maybe I can try making a career out of it. So what I did is, so I did Toastmasters and a lot of you have probably done Toastmasters. Yeah. And I got to the like super advanced level, uh -huh. but it felt really formal. And outside of the world of Toastmasters, I thought a lot of the stuff didn't apply. So then I learned Dale Carnegie. You know Dale Carnegie? How to Win Friends and Influence People? Uh -huh. You ever that book? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I, I was actually a certified Dale Carnegie trainer. I worked there for a while. But at the same time, I felt like, you know, this doesn't seem like it applies to every situation. I, I, it doesn't seem like there's anything practical. Uh -huh. They had a little bit. Toastmasters had a little bit. I took some stand-up comedy. They had some good ideas, but it doesn't translate to the business world. Uh -huh. So I was like, there's got to be something more. So what I did, I went and talked to the police. You went to talk to I went the police? Talk, no, I went and talked to police people, like interrogators. And I said, when you interrogate, interview someone, what are you looking for? How uh -huh. do you know? And then I went to talk to buskers, like street performers. You know, people on the street. I'm uh -huh. like, how do you get people to stop and listen to you? I went and talked to professional wrestlers. Do you know, for like W, like yeah, Hulk that, Hogan, that, yeah. Macho, yeah, 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 yeah. like oh, that. That's oh. like acting, right? It's not. True. Well, I did, yeah, and I yeah. said, how do you get the crowd all like worked up? Mm -hmm. And I took all these elements. I talked to ring announcers. You know, Bruce Buffer from the UFC. He's the mm -hmm. guy who does like that. He's the main guy for the. I talked to him. What do you What do you do to get people involved and to listen? You know, mm -hmm. and I took people who actually do things in the real world, and I tried to make them into physical tactics. And then to answer your question in a long way, um, for like the first couple of years, I just did stuff for free. I was begging okay. people. I was like, hey, can I come and do like a one hour workshop? No charge, you know? And I just kept doing it. And sooner or later, I remember um, one of my clients, the University of British Columbia, uh -huh. they were like, hey, 
we want you to come back next year, but we want to pay you. And I was like, and they're like, how much do you want? And I was like, a hundred bucks. And they were like, Yvonne. No, no, no. You know, <laughs> they want to give are, you more. He, well, they were like, he was like, they were like, you know, that person who comes in and do what you are asking for thousands. And I was like, 200 bucks. <laughs> and they're like, we'll give you 500. And I was like, what? And at that time I was like, that's the, I'm like, what? You can make 500 bucks just do, uh, yeah. And that was it. So how long it takes until people pay you? Uh, I, you know, yeah. it's a couple of years before that you work in so many different industries, like uh, how many years until you really start to make money from public speaking? Yeah, so I would tell you that it was a gradual process. So mm -hmm. what would happen was I would do, I would do one training session for a company, mm -hmm. maybe once every couple of months. Okay. Right. And that, then, yeah. And that, yeah, that was it. And over time, you know, I would do one thing and they would refer me to another person, refer me to another person. It good took about maybe. So what happened was I was living in Vancouver mm -hmm. and I actually, you know, Ashley introduced us. Yeah. I used to own a, a salsa dancing school and yeah. I was trying to start yeah. a career as a salsa dancer. At the same time, I was trying to start a career as like a public speaking person, like a, a teacher. Yeah. And because I was focusing so much on the salsa, this didn't grow. So I sold everything I owned okay. and I moved to Toronto where I'd never been in my life in 2013. And then I said, I'm going to sink or swim. And for two years, I just hustled every day. I called like five different cold, cold five different companies. Mm -hmm. um, and it took maybe in by maybe like 2016, 2017, I was doing it enough that I could like live off of becoming a teacher and it's just kind of grown ever since. Wow. That, that's a, a journey, right? Yeah. And then when we talk about uh, public speaking, everybody talk about confidence. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you born like I have confidence, like a, as a child, you start like everybody. Okay, well, let me, said, yeah. Let me ask everyone this. Let's ask a question. Okay. So everybody okay. in the WeChat. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Look, yeah. Listen up. Okay. <laughs> How, okay. Do you think people are naturally confident or can learn to be confident? So if you think natural, just put natural. People are born that way. If you think learn, put learn. Go. So in the chat. Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, it see. Natural, or you're just we naturally have, uh, learn or learn. Uh, let's see. Learn, Everybody learn. in the chat, go. Yeah, learn, learn. We got learn, learn, learn. So everybody is learning. Yeah. So yeah. Let me show everyone. Natural. No, right no, now. we got natural. We one got natural? natural. Yeah, one natural. Okay. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, let, let me tell you this. I am um I am nervous every time I present. All the strategies you have ever learned about how to not be nervous don't work. Let's be honest, Sherry. Let's be honest. Yeah. Breathing, visualizing, none of it works because nervousness, you're supposed to be nervous. It's physiological. You can't help it. Right. So instead of not being nervous, I practice physical tactics. So even when you feel nervous, you look confident. And we're going to do it right now. Okay, Sherry, here's what we're going to do right now. Here. Okay. We're going to do this together. Now, if we had more time, I'd tell you how I developed this. But basically what I did is I went on Twitch. I went on YouTube. I went mm -hmm. on TikTok. And I found people who are very have huge followings, but all they do is talk. And I saw, what are they doing? So here's what we're going to do. Everyone listening right now, I want you to try this with me, okay? Okay. Then, and we're going to just pretend we're doing a virtual training session, okay? We're speaking... I'm doing a meeting, an update, whatever. It's for work. I have to talk for five minutes, whatever it is. I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. Put your hands like this. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I can't see your hands, you're too close to the camera. But don't worry about that for today. Oh, I know. Put your hands on the other side. If your hands are like by your face, you're too close. So everyone, okay, relax, relax. Everyone, relax. On, YouTube, everyone on YouTube will always have a frame so mm -hmm. you can see like from about their belly button up go like this okay if there's space above you like you know how a lot if there's like this yeah ah dip the screen down okay so that there's no space where your hand is yeah that's perfect perfect now okay. when 
whatever you're presenting, here's the thing. Um, everybody in the WeChat, everybody in the WeChat, how much communication is nonverbal? Look it up right now, everybody. I'm going to keep talking, but everyone in the WeChat, look it up. How yeah. much communication is nonverbal? Go. That, that's, I, I remember. And so yeah, what do you think it is? I think like 80s, no, actually 97, 93% or something. Yeah. What are we yes, getting in the level. chat? 70%, 70%. Lots? Let's get everybody. Uh, Go. 70, 80%, 70, 60, 80. That's the majority of them. Okay. 90%. Okay. So I think it's 87 on 93%. I forgot that. Uh, you know what? Let's say a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Let's say a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. If that's true, then when I'm presenting online, Mm -hmm. right? presentations online aren't my PowerPoint slide. My visuals are not my PowerPoint. I am the visual. Yeah. And this is what we all do. You, you do this, Sherry. I do that. We all do this. We have to do something online. What do we do? Share the PowerPoint slide. And we're the little picture in the corner. Yes. And guess what everyone else does? Do my email while I have to be in this meeting. <laughs> it's true. Oh, you're laughing because you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> here's a, what, here's okay. what we do. Here's what we do. Look, everyone with me right now. This is what all watch any YouTube celebrity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go on Twitch. Watch any Twitch streamer. Okay. Go on TikTok. Watch any like education person on TikTok because you love to watch. They all do this. They all have this frame. See? Mm -hmm. But they talk on one side and then they talk on the other side. Sometimes they do it with one hand and sometimes they do it with the other hand. So, for okay. example, watch me for the rest, because I, I do this naturally. Yeah. I will talk like on like this, and then I'll kind of come over here like this. Okay. And sometimes I'll use one hand, and then I'll come in like this, or I'll talk with one. This is the secret. Okay. If you practice a couple of sentences, a couple of sentences, talk, 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 <laughs> talk, 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 one side to the other. This is how what just one strategy that I teach mm -hmm. that makes you look confident mm -hmm. even when you feel nervous. Okay. It and was, let me add one more thing. Sherry, I'm gonna add one more thing. Okay. Um, have you ever heard, Sherry, that sometimes hands can be distracting? Yeah. Uh, I There's heard a, from sometimes they just say you, you cannot have too much like hand, like they can gonna distract from what you say. So, well, here's the only time that hands are distracting. Okay. This is the fundamental difference. Mm -hmm. Patterns are not natural. Okay. Patterns are not natural. Sherry, if you and I and everybody in the WeChat, suppose we're all hanging out. Okay. We're all going out for like a nice glass of wine, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. If we're just talking to our friends, we are moving constantly. Yes. Every yes, few definitely. seconds. Watch yeah. behavior. We're always moving. It's only when we're formal, we're like, hello, ladies and gentlemen, today, I'm very excited to present to you. Like that's that right away. You probably are like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't care. <laughs> the only time hands are distracting is when they do the same thing over and over. Okay. If I do this right now and already you're noticing it, right? If I just do this now, it's distracting because okay. it's the same thing over and over. And if I kept doing this, it looks super weird. And you're, yeah. you're not, you're not even listening to me anymore. I can tell you're, everyone's like, what? So the secret is the diversity. Yeah. The diversity sometimes here, you're just saying. sometimes yeah. here, sometimes both hands. That's the secret. If you do the same thing over and over, if you do the same thing over and over, the same thing over, then it looks weird, but diversity is natural because that's how we would be acting. If we were just talking. Wow. That. That's the first tips. Uh, really, we, we need to learn. Yo, I want to change the world. Listen, yeah. I want to change the world. Forget ideas. Listen, everybody in the WeChat, listen to me right now. This is like what I believe. There is no information that you can't find out for yourself in seconds. Just go online. If I told you who created the elevator, you'd be like, this dude. Information does not have value anymore. I. Ideas, there's a million people on LinkedIn trying to tell you how to live your life, right? Yes. Ideas, there's too many ideas, just like there's too many TV shows, right? That's not, that doesn't have value anymore. It's physical tactics. How can I take that 
idea and make it into something I can practice the way I practice, like lifting weights or throwing a ball. This is the secret to self-improvement. It's not ideas. It's not information. It's physical tactics. Because I believe that being charismatic, being good communicator is physical things that people can practice the way they practice throwing a ball. Mm -hmm. So now I'm watching you. I see your hand here and so here. So now everybody's like, is he being sincere? What's going on? I know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, do you play any sports? Or do you yeah. do anything? Anything. Anything I do. Yoga, yoga. fitness, whatever. Anything? Yeah. Yoga. You do? Okay. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It becomes muscle memory. You don't think yes. about it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I keep bringing up Ashley. Ashley, if you're there, say hi in the chat so everyone knows who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So Ashley knows me because we are both salsa dancers. Yeah. And when I first started learning how to salsa dance, I was like, I saw the feet. The, I'm like, I can't do that. My body doesn't. The first year I had to concentrate so much on my feet. I couldn't do anything else, but then it gets muscle memory. Now I don't think about my feet because it's muscle memory. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. This is automatic and it can be for you too. Yeah, I need to practice, 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 right? And then you stop thinking about it. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants you to be the speaker at the next convention because you're the one that looks like they're the most confident, even though you're scared to death. And how about that to help you grow in your career? Yeah, that that's... Uh, and you know, like everybody knows, it's need to practice, practice, practice. But sometimes they just saying like, I remember each every words I want to say, but when I on the stage, it's everything Goes away. is empty. Yeah, I forgot. Have you ever had that kind mm -hmm. of oh, experience? Time. And you know what the secret? Is? Here's the here's what I'm here's why this happens, everybody. Okay, in the chat, in the WeChat, how do you practice? Tell me what you do specifically. Like what do you, what do you do? How do you prepare your presentation? Just tell me any of your ideas. Hold on, let's wait five seconds. Yeah, wait five seconds. Uh, ladies, uh, okay, I wrote it down. Yeah, what else? Uh, write down, down on my notes. And imagination. Okay. Say, it, uh, say it loud, loud. Yeah, say it out loud, yeah. Yeah. Now, all those things are fine. Keep coming, everybody. Keep writing your things. And Sherry, you can update me as we Practice go through. Practice before mirror. In practice front of, front of Mary, yeah, big time. My family, yeah. Yeah. So that can I? Who's the last person that said family in front of their family? Uh that's called in Chinese. Yeah. 食欲的美食, uh, practice and record it. Ask for feedback. So here's what I love about that. There's you're almost there. You're ninety five percent there. I love that. Here's memorize. The there's another one said memorize, memorize. what you say. No. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Okay. The way we write is not how we talk. There are writers who make movies who are very rich because they can make writing sound natural. But there's only a few people in the world who can do that. The way we write, you're going to write your speech and it's going to sound great when you write it. But Sherry, between us and the thousand people watching. Yeah, there's thousands of people. Listen, between us, yeah. can't you tell? You can always tell when someone is like reading or memorizing. You can always tell. And the reason you can always tell is because what we say, what we write is not how we talk. That, that's true. And now I would like to move on to my second point. As we can see from this bullet, it is important that we let all oh, you, you've already stopped listening. You already <laughs> stopped. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. because no one talks that way. Nobody talks that way. So let me give you some strategies, everyone. Here is the secret to practicing. All the things you said, fine. But unless you can replicate the nervousness while you're doing those things, your practice is useless. This is why you will all practice, practice. You'll sit in front of your computer. You'll look at your slides and be like, okay, everyone, hello. I'm going to talk to you about this. You'll sit, you'll write it out. You're like, okay, practice in front of the mirror, right? And then you have to do it for real. And you forget why because you didn't have nervousness so how do you here's what when i practice uh -huh. there's let me give you two ways you can do this okay one you have to practice with the stress of being watched by someone 
So you go up to your your husband, significant other, your partner, anyone who lives with, who lives with you. You talk to your friends and you say, "Hey, can I run a few minutes of my presentation in front of you?" They say yes. You go like this. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I just need a second. Good. Good. You have to do that in front of that person four or five times. When it stops happening, you know what you got to do? Find somebody else. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to do it again. You ready? Oh, hold on, hold on. But it's going to be not as bad. Because what you are doing is you are getting, you are creating a physiological response. So that even though your adrenaline is pumping, your brain is still working. It's what the military does to make people be able to, soldiers to act even under stress. It's what every major um, professional sport does. They replicate the big game before the big game. They have people come in and watch to replicate. If you can do symptoms when there's lots of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So you practice in front of someone, you're going to, adrenaline's going to go up. Uh, uh, the more you do it, the less it affects you. Second, suppose you're like, Yvonne, I live alone. I have no friends. I have mm -hmm. no one to talk to. What about me? This is what I do. And it's so hard. And you won't be able to do it. But if you can. <laughs> so we are you have to, you have to curious go. to know yeah, so what. <laughs> what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you go outside and you practice where people can see you. Well, that, that's. So, that's, so let's say you go to the park and you sit down and you go, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Someone's going to walk by. You're going to be like, mm -mm. even, okay, here's another thing. Go outside where no one, just the fact that you're outside, you could be in an alley and no one is there. And you'll be like, oh my God, what if, what if, but what you're doing is you're replicating that self-consciousness, that adrenaline increase. If you do that a few times, man, you're going to still feel it when you have to do it for real, but it won't be the first time and you'll build resistance. It's like drugs. You know, like cocaine, like here's, the, here's why cocaine is bad because the more you do it, you build a resistance to it because mm -hmm. it's a physiological response. Adrenaline is the same thing. So the more you practice with adrenaline, the less it bothers you, the more you can keep thinking. Okay. And I'm Sherry, this is what I do when I, I had, I I'm I, right now I'm teaching at Georgia tech in Atlanta. Okay. Believe me when I tell you that I walk to, it's like maybe 15 minute walk from where I'm living. I walk there saying my presentation out loud. And every time someone walked by, you know what? I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. But I tried to keep going. But sometimes I, I just got too self-conscious and I'm like, where was I? But I do it so I can replicate the adrenaline. So you're still doing that? All the time. I'm nervous. I'm, all, I'm nervous. I still get nervous. But because I always practice this way uh -huh. and I use physical tactics like I'm doing right now, uh -huh. no one can tell. And it's also why I wear black so you can't see all the sweat. <laughs> like, here's the thing. Sure, I'm nervous now. When we first started, I was a little nervous because I'm speaking to all you from around the world. Who And none of you know who I am. Like, I'm, like, I'm not like some famous person. You're like, who is this guy? Okay, I'm going to go because Sherry said so, right? I know that. Wait, wait. Of course I'm nervous but I never let you see it. Yeah, we, we think, we all think like uh, already you are a public speaker and uh, you spoke in front of like 50,000 people. That was You're horrifying. not nervous anymore. Uh, it was so scary. You, you know when you go to like the big stadiums? Yes. And they're full like to watch like whatever sport and, and on the big screen, the jumbo screen, that I was on that. Mm -hmm. And I was scared to death. I was like, like so sweaty, so sweaty. But what I had done is the day before I went to the stadium and I asked them to put me on stage and the uh -huh. people working would stop and look and I get super scared and I'm like, hey, hey, hey. but I did it before so that when I had to do it for real, I, it wasn't a new feeling. Uh, so that's rehearsal is really important. Uh -huh. Rehearsal with other people watching. Rehearsal in private is useless. Okay. So rehearsal let's, uh, by yourself in a safe place is useless. Okay. So this is real technique. Mm -hmm. Rehearsal 
in front of somebody else, not uh, by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. In a safe and, place. Yeah. And by the way, for everyone in the chat, if any of you have any questions you want to ask me that uh, as I'm saying these things, if you have questions, put them in the chat. Don't yeah. Be shy. Let me check it out to see if there is not, any don't worry. questions. I'm just saying, feel free. Okay. Uh, just, here's what we'll do by uh, Sherry. We'll do this. If there's, if people ask questions and I don't uh -huh. get a chance to answer them, uh -huh. um, send me the questions, like save the chat, send me the questions and everyone I will make, like I'll, I'll go on Instagram or something and I'll record answers for you. Okay. So you can Perfect. watch it. Perfect. Yeah. Right here down on my notes. Like, like, you know, our audience is so busy to answer your questions. Like everything is answer your questions. Good, good. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Talk to me, people. Yeah, that's right now. Like, we have how many? But don't worry. We can. You can ask me some other questions while we're waiting. Yeah, Sarah, yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah. let me let me also give you another little tactic that I've been doing today. Okay. When we're online, it is so like. Watch. Hold on. Wait. How long? How long does that feel? Right. You're like, oh my god. There's too much silence. Whenever you ask your audience to do something, give uh -huh. me a yes or no, give me a smiley face. Uh -huh. I always count to five. Count to five. Okay. Yeah, because here, look. Okay, hold on. I smiley face. That was like four seconds. You need that little gap of time. But okay. when we're presenting, we get so nervous uh -huh. that we're like, okay, how many of you want to do this? Nobody. Okay, I've got to move on. Got to move on because you're afraid you don't see it right away. In person, yeah. you would see it right away away yeah whenever you ask your audience to do something mm -hmm. count to five in your head and then okay. everyone who isn't paying attention will do this this is another thing if everyone who's like not paying attention will be like why is it quiet what's happening why <laughs> and you get them back that that's like a pause for several seconds that's confident like uh, showing you confidence right because i uh, read so many tips about public speaking they always say when you go to uh, to do the presentation. So you need, sometimes you need to leave the pause that show you, you are like in charge like that. But sometimes we started to do it. It's really getting nervous. And then just exactly like what you say, oh, there's nobody, nobody. Okay, I'm gonna, I gonna like uh, go to the next like a uh, topic, something like that, yeah. Here's, here's another, th I, I agree that pausing is important, not uh -huh. just for confidence. Everyone, okay. One of the problems in this is me. I'm going to talk a little smack right now, Sherry. So one of the things is so many of the people that try and teach you public speaking aren't teaching you public speaking. They are teaching you to like motivational speaking. Follow well, your dreams. The difference? Say, sure well, let me tell you the difference. Let me tell you. Hey, um, let me tell you. This. Maybe I work in saying my public speaking is showing a sales report. What does that have to do with my passion and dreams? Nothing. Maybe I'm an engineer and I have to give a product up. Uh -huh. maybe I'm an accountant and I have to talk about financials what does any of that have to do with what is engaging finding my passion making them accept none of that applies here's the thing most of us have to present like in the in the chat tell me your career what do you do for work what kind of presentations do you have to do I bet almost none of you will say oh I have to inspire people on a daily basis nobody does that <laughs> yeah, that's nobody funny. does that nobody here's does. what you have to do oh I'm a project manager and I have to give like an update onto like this cost benefit analysis. Oh, I work in finance and I have to do like, I have to update them on my analysis of wheat. Right? So all these motivational speakers are teaching you things that you can't use. So, so, so this is, this is one of my, my big problems with it. And this is one of the reasons why I, I teach the way I teach. I teach physical tactics that have nothing to do with emotions. Mm -hmm. Silence is important. It does show confidence, but there's a bigger reason why silence is important. It has to do with short-term memory. This is not my opinion. This is neuroscience. This is evolutionary biology. Our brain holds information for like 15 to 30 seconds before it disappears in short-term memory. So if I pause every 15 to 30 seconds, I increase the likelihood that someone remembers what I'm saying. And because pausing is so awkward, it makes you get nervous, right? When you pause, like you probably get like, you get nervous. So here's what you do instead. 
ask a question and then pause. Because people will be like, oh, do they want an answer or should I answer? They'll be doing all the thinking. You, the, imagine if you're doing, a, what industry do people put in in the chat? Oh, the Give industry, me some job right. they have. Uh, people asking that what, like people now start asking questions. Oh, okay. Maybe so let's suppose, um, let's suppose- Marketing, like, there is a marketing. Okay, so let's suppose I'm in marketing. I'm doing a presentation about um, the execution of a new camp, uh, the execution of the delivery of a new kind of energy drink, okay? I would do the best way to pause because I can't, you know, find your passion through this energy drink, right? It's so fake, it's so fake. It's so fake. So instead, you, say, you ask questions. Suppose it's about how you're gonna like deliver the energy drink into like a bunch of different provinces. And you, and you literally say, so should we do rail or should we do truck? Our analysis shows, and then you go into your slide, you put a question and you pause at the end of the question. So people think about it. It goes into long-term memory and then you engage them by switching your slide. Wow, well, that, that's really good tips. Yeah, like people start to thinking and then you'll go to your, that that's really good. And yeah, uh, we have uh, questions. What I have if answers, you hopefully. <laughs> uh, what if you forgot? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So the question for everyone there is, suppose, Ivan, I, I get really nervous and halfway through my presentation, I forgot and I, maybe I don't have my notes. So mm -hmm. let me give you two answers, okay? Mm -hmm. Two answers. One, when you have your notes, if you write small word for word, you're going to mess up because you'd be like, where was it? This happens all the time. Oh my God, where is it? Where is it? And then you feel the press. So instead, write in really big words and only bullets to remind you. Okay. That's the first thing. So if you have your notes and I'm going to just show you, like, suppose I have, like, I have, suppose I have this card here, right? Uh -huh. And I would be like one or two words, one or two words. So that I'm, and I, and I put it here in front of my computer like this, or if I'm in person, I put it down. And even if I'm standing over there, I can still read it. And so if I go and I look at the reminders, oh yeah, yeah. That'll help to remind you what you say. Now, suppose you have no notes or there's, oh my God, there's too much writing. I can't, oh my God, I have to say something. Ask them all a question. And here's the question you can ask them. Every time you forget, you can be like, Write this down, everybody. Why am I telling you this? Okay. Or you do this. This is, I always say this. Why am I telling you this? And then it'll be a few seconds. Maybe you get answers or maybe they'll just be like, oh, why are you telling me this? And that <laughs> buys you time. Yeah. What do we know so far? Oh, Every time I've knows? forgotten, and this has happened to me where I'm like, so what do we know so far? Tell me, you guys tell me, what do we know so far? And then, and then all of a sudden, they're giving you the information, you have time to think, <laughs> and someone is gonna say something, but, oh, yes, exactly, yes, we were just talking about, and it'll help to make you think. Okay, so uh, just asking questions, and then use the time to think. <laughs> uh, Okay, there is but another those two question. questions are my favorite. You don't have to use those two. Those are just very easy because they can apply to everything. Okay. And there's another question from uh, Claire. Do you Hi, write Claire. your <laughs> Yeah, tell me their names. Tell me their names. Yeah. Do you write uh, your script when you deliver a speech? No. Um, Understand the way we write is not the same as how we talk, but a script. Uh, helps us to control time. Yes. So there's a couple of things in that question, Claire. Number one, it's the fear of talking too much and going over your 10 minute allotment, right? Um, or your 50, whatever the time is. And so you do your notes and you time it specifically. But let me first, before I give you a strategy, let me ask you a question. If you're doing all the talking, how do you know anyone is listening? Here's another question for you. What are you gonna tell me that I can't find out for myself from the PowerPoint slides or like the thing you leave it behind afterward? So 
the thing that's going to make people actually listen to what you're saying is not the information. It's how you deliver the information. So Yvonne, I'm worried about the time. So here's what I do. This is what I do. Okay. You have a 10 minute presentation. Okay. The first thing you do is this, you practice your 10 minute presentation, then take two minutes off. Now you have to do everything you did in eight minutes, then see if you can put all the information that's important in five minutes, then two minutes, then one minute. And the reason you do this is because you get very used to identifying what is important information and what is just filler. Mm -hmm. And then pick what I do is I, if I have a 10 minute presentation, I, I always make it half the time. I'm just going to do it in five minutes because in the heat of the moment, when you get nervous, it's going to go longer. And that's the problem. It always goes longer. So prepare a shorter presentation, practice with sh less and less time, and then make a shorter presentation. Always practice as if, as if it's half the time. Oh, and the last thing with your notes, with your notes, just to say it again, write in reminders. So if you're going to do the background of a specific product, the background of a project, don't. So now I'd like to discuss the background of the project. Um, we started this project three years ago, but just put three years or just put background equals three years because you, you can just say the rest. And then you practice that with your notes that are reminders in front of someone. And then you're going to forget in front of them. And you, you're like, uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. And you're replicating. Okay. I hope that helps you, Claire. Let me know if that helps uh, you. Claire, write it down. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> and then Ashley said he did a long pause. <laughs> now we start. <laughs> okay. And uh, there is another question just saying, do you have tips for if you are presenting in a, a language that's not your native language? Yeah, that's a big one, right? Yeah. Because suppose I, I speak Mandarin, that's my first language. And now, but the, the language of business is English. Yeah. So if you work for an international company and I work with a lot of international companies and whenever we have meetings, it's always going to be English, right? Mm -hmm. But you're like, my English is not as good as it could be. What happened? What do I do? I have a few things to say. Okay. First, when we speak in another language, the, the time we get stuck is when we can't find the perfect word. Mm -hmm because we're trying to use the right word instead of the simple words. Mm -hmm. So I'm, maybe you've heard that like the perfect language, the perfect language for uh, communication is like 12, 13 year old language. So the language that's sophisticated for a 12 or 13 year old, it should be about as hard as you can do it. Everyone here, even if Mandarin or Cantonese is your official languages or whatever other languages you speak, Hindi, Punjabi, what have you, you can all probably speak. If you can understand what I'm saying, you can speak, your English is good enough. I have not used any big words, have I? I use very simple language. So that's one, okay. that's just for you to think about. Two. That's great, Yvonne, but what can I do? How can I practice in case I forget? Here's what you have to do. It goes back to practice. You have to get, when you practice in front of someone, the next level, once you, oh, I have my presentation perfect, okay? Now, whoever you practice in front of, I want, you say, can you please interrupt me as much as possible? Keep oh, interrupting oh. me. Because the times you forget, Right? The who, who asked that question, by the way? Who am I talking to right now? Who, who asked that question? Uh, actually, that says Ashley asked. Okay, uh, Ashley, yeah. So asked, the time, yeah. so Ashley, the times you forget is usually when you get interrupted or at the end when someone asks you a question that you didn't prepare. So being fast on your feet is something that is a muscle that you exercise. So you can improve on it. The way you improve is by getting people to interrupt you in the middle of your presentations when you're practicing. And I'll tell you one last thing. Sherry, do you know how you said uh, I went to university in McGill? Do you know where McGill is? Yeah, in uh, uh, Montreal. In Montreal. Do you know what the main language is in Montreal? Yeah, French. It's, it's French. Yeah. My first Toastmasters was in French, and my French was terrible. Like, <laughs> horrible. 
pour le monde qui parle en français maintenant, mais je suis meilleur, mais like at that time, it was brutal. And I went to Toastmasters and I got up and I spoke and I stumbled through it. But because I had practiced my uh, confidence tactics, mm -hmm. um, I, at the time I didn't even re realize I was doing it. It was just something I'd learned along the way. Mm -hmm. People thought I spoke French. Even though I was going like, uh, today I am to be very happy in situations like this that I want to speak. It was totally terrible French, but because I, I, I was using my physical tactics, people were like, oh yeah, you speak French. And I was like, I have no idea what anyone's saying to me in this room. So I hope that helps you, Ashley. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Like, you know, like a uh, majority of us and for, for Chinese, we are English, the second language. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just have that kind of fear, you know, like I don't speak perfect English. Uh, so afraid to speak out that that's the and then for our culture and then spe special, they said silence is the gold. And uh, you know, in our culture, and especially for Chinese women, we we were educated like uh, to be quiet, don't like you know that kinds of things. Uh, so when we come to Canada as um, facing the multicultural society, sometimes we always thinking I need to fully prepared, and then I can ask that question, or I need to fully prepared, and then I can answer that question, you know. And sometimes we just working so hard, but uh, some it, you, it's just like a, people saying like even feels like you are not there, like you are invisible. That's the thing. Like why we I'm so excited to have you here, you know. And then you're just saying like whatever, like as long as uh, we can understand what you're saying, that means we are perfect. We have perfect English, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, I'll give you two other little things. Mm -hmm. One is most of you speak better English than you think. Number one. Number two is another strategy. And this is not my idea. This is something I saw someone do. And then I asked a few students to try it. Mm -hmm. And they said it worked super well. They, do you know uh, what the, the term, the elephant in the room? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, I know that. Yeah. This so the first time I saw it, I'm like, man, this girl is amazing. I was like, boom. So she walked in there, um, and she was in ESL. She had English as a second language. She spoke Cantonese, mm -hmm. and this is in Vancouver many years ago. And she said she was like, she started off, and she said like, in, she, her English was like very broken. She's like, everyone, some of you can tell that I have an accent, and everyone kind of giggled. And she said. I'm going to try my best, but if there's a word you don't understand, you can ask, it's okay. And I can repeat it because that'll help us both. And it made every, and here's the, and you know what ended up happening? People were like, no, 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 your English is good. No, 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 no. It, it, right away, everyone did a 180. And she came across so confident. And she told me afterwards, she's like, oh, I was scared. Like I was scared to death. I was scared. She was like, I was scared to death. I thought they were all going to laugh at me. Um, I asked a few other students to do it a few times. Um, one of them was a teacher at McGill who was uh -huh. a PhD. He was a PhD candidate and he had uh -huh. to teach an undergrad class and he was from mainland. And he was like, he's like, Yvonne, I talk to no one. All I do is I write in English and I talk to like my, my PhD supervisor. And now I have to teach this class. And I said, start the class off and let them know. Hey everyone, I speak Mandarin. English is my second language. If I stumble on a word, help me. If you don't understand a word, just ask. It's okay. And right away, the room was like, it's they, right away. People are like, oh, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> and it's such a great tactic that you should all try. Okay, that's perfect. And it'll make you look so confident. I guarantee. The first girl, when she did that as a joke, she's like, some of you may notice I have an accent. It's a, and people were like, can we laugh? Oh, my God. Is that a joke? People, <laughs> no one knew. But she came across so confident. I still remember it. Like it was like 15 years ago, and I still remember it. So see how good is that, right? So and then we have uh, uh, other question. And so listen, I don't know if you can keep track. So if there's questions that I don't answer, I'm serious. Send them to me. Yeah, and I'll will, make some yeah. videos on Instagram to like so that I can answer everyone's questions. But go ahead. Okay. 
Uh, How much time do we have, by the way? Am I going long? Oh, I don't understand. Well, we, we have 10 minutes. Left. Perfect. Time is flying, right? You don't have a script rather than a bullet points, right? Yeah. Okay. Or instead of bullet points, think reminders. Because okay. sometimes people will make bullets, but it'll be like in a, it'll be like, like in your normal, in your normal size, and it'll be like a big sentence. Mm -hmm. That's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. Make it big. Okay. Make it big so that you can see it even if it's sitting at the table over there. And it's a make it five words or less. And only add words if you if during your practice, if you keep forgetting something, if the five words aren't enough, then you can add more words. Okay. Yeah. That that's perfect. Great tips. Thank you. Uh, very great tips. Sounds very challenging. Uh, yeah, okay. but <laughs> just like I remember the first time I played ping pong, I was like, dude, I can't play. It's so hard. The first <laughs> time I played the guitar, I'm like, I don't have my hands like I, I, I. the first time I danced, it was challenging, but it, yeah. it gets easier the more you do it. That's just like making love. Sorry. <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> Andy Bori. Yeah. Why you want so like you have uh, uh, you create uh, the hashtag yeah. Andy Bori and it's the name of your book. So tell me more about uh, like uh, why you choose the ending boring. Have you ever heard the term infotainment? Infotainment. Infotainment. That's so first information right. and entertainment put together. Uh, yeah, entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Info infotainment. So here's the thing. How many world changing ideas, amazing ideas, have we lost to boredom? Think about that. The richest people in the world are not the smartest people in the world. I decided to call my book End Boring because my dream is that people are like, the next time you have to sit in a meeting or go to a conference, you're like, I can't wait. When was the last time you looked forward to a meeting? That's my, but here's the thing. The only reason these things are boring because technically they should be the best ways we're social animals we communicate but yet when we have to do it in a presentation it is the worst it's brutal let's just be honest it's brutal you sit there you're like oh my god you log in you turn your camera off you turn it and you just do something else because it's so you're like i'll just read the slides later but you never read the slides i want to change the world i want to show people that the tr the secret to communication is not information and it's not just entertainment it's combining them the way you make information the way you deliver information is really what's going to make people excited interested remember so i wanted to call the book and boring because i want to teach the tactics my what i believe is that the tactics i have can make any presentation more interesting no matter how dry or technical the topic, no matter if it's research, if it's graph, whatever it is, I give you like 20 different tactics. And the more of them you use, the more interesting you become, the less boring you are, even if your topic is boring. Wow. <laughs> That's making me like, I cannot wait just to try it. And uh, I know that that's a great idea. Like really sometimes, we just found it out as so boring, like just try to keep it not sleep, fall in sleep, right? That's the, what's happening. And uh, another thing is you teach um, uh, Costa and Udemy. What's the average of the, those uh, students, like in their profession, they are professional or the business people? What can... So, you know, it's so funny, Sherry, because one of the things that I've struggled with Mm -hmm. um, I was working with like uh, someone who was trying to help me with my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Please follow me on Instagram. Public speaking lab. Please follow me on Instagram. <laughs> okay. So that's done. Okay. So I was trying and they were saying like, who's your audience? And I'm like, everyone. And they're like, no, it can't be everyone. And they're like, but who, who do you appeal to? So I went on Coursera and I went on Udemy and mm -hmm. dude, it's like, <laughs> it's like the majority, I would say 60, 70% of my audience is outside of Canada. It's outside of North America. Um, wow. It's predominantly uh, all, all Eastern Asia from, yeah, from Korea to China, Singapore, India, 
like Pakistan, all, all that, all, all of that area. That's like maybe 60, 70 percent. Ages, it's like I look at the demographics. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's honestly, it's maybe like 20 percent is 18 to 25. Mm -hmm. There's like 20 percent that are like 30 to 40. Then there's a bunch of people from like 40 to 60 year olds that are in there. Um, every like from medicine to engineering to business, I, they're all that's that's there's no one demographic that it seems to appeal more than anyone else. So it looks like uh, East Asian people is really like to yeah. uh, that. That's the thing, like as culture, like in East Asia, and then usually like not like speak uh, like publicly, right? To have your opinion, something like that. So people are looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because I'm trying to think. Like, I'm trying to like who it, who is it? Everyone can be better because if everyone was a good communicator, we we'd be living on Jupiter. We'd be so much more advanced in our society if everyone was really good at like getting people excited and interested and being dynamic. We would have like free energy. Like it would be like I feel like we'd be living in the future. You know, that's true. but yeah, so few people do it because no one knows how to do it. Even like, I, I like, well, what I say at the beginning with you, like, I checked so many courses and uh, read books about uh, like public speaking skills, how to like uh, attracting people to listen to what you say. See, I've started using those techniques, <laughs> so checking people and then come listen to me fast learner <laughs> right and love I love that bravo how about a round of applause for Sherry in the chat everyone can share <laughs> a little like applause or something that was good look at she's learning see yeah. and it not even it didn't even take an hour oh uh, yeah and, yeah and go ahead keep going see uh no I forgot what I should say ask I, I just was yeah ask you a question so give us like at the beginning you all promised to give us some code yes. and uh, the first 100 people to go to the udemy yeah. and have free courses from you but everybody need to leave the comments right well, like, they don't, uh, okay so yeah so listen uh sherry's going to share in the link um mm -hmm. a link to udemy uh the first 100 people can uh, take my uh it's called public speaking a tactical approach and here's the thing it's just it's physical tactics like this that I've been teaching, plus other tactics, how to make an opening, how to transition, how to close, all these things. Yes. But here's the other really cool part. So many of these like communication courses and teachers talk for like eight hours. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't want to do, I, you know, Dale Carnegie <laughs> was, was 12 weeks of like five hour, like all night, all, you know, my course, this course is like an hour. Okay. It's like, here's a tactic, go practice it. Here's another tactic, go practice it. So it's super efficient and to the point. And all I ask is if you're one of the people that gets in, just write a review. Right. When you finish the course, just let me know what you think. Give me a couple of stars. It helps the course grow. Mm -hmm. follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> oh, that's another thing I realized. <laughs> you know, like I, I realized sometimes uh, your voice as like excited and loud, and then sometimes your voice is start getting low. <laughs> I real is that is that a technique? Here's what I've noticed, Sharon. Mm -hmm. The more I I use my hands, mm -hmm. the more that dictates my pace. You you were doing it too, right? Like, and then we start talking. So <laughs> this over time has because uh -huh. when I pause, I usually go. And this is something I've noticed. So it's how my physicality has affected my delivery. Mm -hmm. Pause. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see what we have. We have one minute left. Uh, okay, let's do it. Uh, and there you have everybody just saying great. Amazing. And thank you, by the way, to everyone who's in, who's still with us here, thank you all so much for coming. Okay. Um, Sherry, thank you for not just having me, but I think it's really great when, especially, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Um, I was raised in a, a matriarchal family. 
So I was raised by seven women um, as a child. Yes, I had my mother, my mother's six sisters and my grandmother. And that was my entire reference group. Uh, more and more often, I, I just think we need women and everyone who in this world needs to support women more. I'm a big believer in that. I'm a, I think if more women were in charge, we'd have no more problems. We'd have like way less wars and we'd be able to solve the environment. So I think it's, I just want to commend you and everyone who's here for supporting one another. Yeah, like I totally agree. Like if more women in power, we have, we're gonna have no problem in the world. I love women in charge, man. I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm down. <laughs> Okay, I just need to copy the links to and then to give to everybody later. Yeah. Everybody asking how to do a good opening and ending. There is another question. That's in the course. That's in the course. We that's in the course. Yeah. But that's in the course. That's in the course. Um, uh, yeah. How do we got the cars? I already have the, the link later. Yeah. I can uh, share with you guys. So just wait a second. <laughs> yeah, if you, and if you want to just, if you don't care about the link, if you want to find it, uh, mm -hmm. it's just look for, a, I'll share, I think I'll share, I'll give you the link too, and you can share it in the WeChat after the conversation. Yeah. So I'll give you the course link and the free link and then my, my Instagram link. <laughs> oh, I'm on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. TikTok. I'm on okay. TikTok. Yeah, well, what's the name around. on TikTok? It's everything is public speaking lab. Everything is public speaking lab. Okay, everything is public speaking lab. Okay, let's write it down and then I'm gonna follow. Or if you, you search the hashtag and boring, I'll probably pop up. Oh, okay, that's great. Okay, thank you. Well, there are so many people saying thank you, Eva. Great live stream thank you, today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. And really, a big thank you to Ashley, by the way, for introducing us and giving me this opportunity. She's in the chat. Yeah. Can say. She's and in the you, chat. She's in the chat. Yeah. So yeah. Great. yeah. And then I, for sure, I'm going to uh, talk to you again. Uh, I think we need to have something. Uh, we, we're going to do it. I'd together. love to. Yeah. Okay. You want to do like yeah. a, we can do a virtual seminar or something like that? I'd love. To. Yeah. 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 We're going to do that. And like for a, anyone who there. didn't get their question answered, like reach out to me. My door is always open. I will always answer questions not sometimes it takes me a little a couple of days or a week because I get a lot but I will always <laughs> answer I answer everyone who writes me okay thank you so much really like I enjoy this live stream you know there's no uh question need to remember it right we just talk enjoy the time together that that's I think the first time like oh, every right? time <laughs> yeah I, I need to have the question and then yeah, it's different. What says public speaking and then live stream? That's today is what is live stream. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your tips. Thank yeah. you so much. And thank you thank all for being here with today. Yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, now it's nine o'clock. So I will see you next month. Okay, thanks. Bye. Do we get a picture or anything? Yeah, I think. Uh, our team already got uh, several pictures for sure, but we Great. have the post. Double hearts. The, oh, double heart. Do you know There's that? Double hearts. There's, <laughs> great heart. There's double hearts. There's another one too. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so many things. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.